As summer approaches and the wheat ripens, the sheathing on our workshop garage is met with some frustration. Can I hand you something? Can I hand you the nail gun? Okay, all right. As we are starting to learn, construction does not always go according to plan. Tension will rise. It's gonna be 105. 105. In about an hour, so. Yep. So we, we gotta should get. We video and we should be. He's a happy guy. Sometimes, even more serious problems will show up. <laughs> 121 days into our build, progress is steadily being made. We had just completed trusses, one of the more intimidating parts of the build and we were ready to jump into sheathing. But we quickly learned, just as with framing, everything in construction is easier with two people. Can I hand you the nail gun? Okay, all right, okay. Starting alone, Ryan worked his way around the building, but he had to try all sorts of props to hold up the sheets. As he got higher up, this became more difficult. Okay, so the hard part is that it's so tall. How do you lift the giant sheet up there? and without it tipping backwards on you. And so I was taking the big sheet and trying to go up the ladder and it's extremely exhausting and hard and hurts your knees. What I should have done is made a little jig that has like a bracket at the top so I can slip the sheet under, which will stop it from tipping out and then set it in. So today Amanda's here, she's gonna act as that bracket. Her job is just to hold the sheet in so it doesn't tip out. And that's how I became the official holder. Look at this. This is perfect. What do you think, honey? We were really happy with our system going down the line that we had set up. And we were just really getting a lot of work done and everything was going well until it rained. Normally, rain would not be a problem, but the rough terrain scissor lift that we rented was really heavy. It had four outriggers that pushed down, giant tires that dug into the dirt, and it needed to be positioned really close to the building. Combine all of these with a little bit of wet soil, and you get stuck. We lucked out though. By fully extending the legs, we were able to lift the machine about an inch. This gave us enough room to slide a board under the wheel and get just enough traction to get out of the mud. With that resolved, we could get back to sheathing where Ryan was making some beginner mistakes. Who knew router bits are meant to cut in one direction? So when you use a router bit the wrong way, you get this really crooked line. It's not straight. It's really hard to control. It's it really hot. And when you use it the right way, you get this nice, beautiful, smooth, clean cut. Chalk it up to beginner mistake number 207. <laughs> He eventually figured it out, and then we continued on to finish the ground floor. Little did we know, when we wrapped up for the day, we would be met with an eventful evening. We have security cameras on site that catch all sorts of movement. It could be us leaving, contractors coming, an owl, a skunk, or even raccoons. On this night, for the first time, we were alerted to human detection. It was around 3 in the morning, and we got the alert. We checked the camera, and we saw this truck arrive. We weren't sure what they were up to, but we knew it was no good when they tried to break the camera. A little bit of backstory is required to help you understand why they might be here. When we started this build, we had a shipping container delivered onto the site to hold our tools. A few weeks ago, someone tried to cut our lock. Guess what happened today? Someone tried to pick our shipping container to break in. I guess we're gonna have to up our security. We got lucky though. They almost got in. They cut through the shipping container, you know, bolt, and then about a quarter through our lock. I think the shroud of the container blocked their blade from getting the leverage to finish the cut or their blade broke. We were thinking, you know what? We better up our security. So if for any reason these people were to come back, 
they won't get as much. Right. And we can catch them. Security upgrade number one, giant red lock. <laughs> it goes around the loop like this. Problem is, if you look at the side, you, you still don't have that much metal to cut through. So while this is an upgrade, and it might buy us some time, but it's still not going to stop anyone. We also bought this Yuffie camera. This little guy, surprisingly good. I love my tech. I was like, I don't need proprietary tech that has its own app and doesn't integrate with my network the way I love things. But this thing, you buy it, you put in the SIM card, you plug in the solar panel, and it has stayed charged and worked reliably for about eight months. What's cool is if you touch it or try to move it, it gets an alert that someone's trying to break it and it makes a really loud siren sound. It's a good thing we got these cameras because breaking a tent number two was well on its way. It was about three in the morning and Ryan kind of hits me and says, Mana, Mana, somebody is on our property. And I'm just like, you know, it's three o'clock in the morning and I'm like, maybe they turned down the wrong road. And I was like, just watch them. All of a sudden, they grabbed the camera and threw it and alarm went off. And, and at that point, I'm like, oh no. He gets out of bed, he runs out the back door and into the car, drives off in his pajamas. As I'm in the car, I call the police. And then fortunately, as I'm driving there, the local cop, he's at the corner. I go to him, tell him what's going on, and then we both drive towards the property together. As we're getting there, he cuts his lights. So I figure I'll cut my lights and stay about a quarter mile back and let them do their thing. Talking with her on the phone during this, telling her what's going on, and I wait about 10, 15 minutes, round the corner just to see what they're up to. And I see 12 plus cops there, just, they called in everyone. <laughs> and they're searching the property, but they're not at the right property. They're at her parents' house. My dad happened to be awake at that time and he looked out the window, you know, he's standing in his jammies and he sees flashlights and assault rifles and all these people raiding his yard. He's thinking, what is going on? Is there someone on the loose? You know, he wakes up my mom and she's worried, did I lock all the doors? So she's running around the whole house trying to make sure all the doors are locked. I didn't want to go into the grass because I'd get shot. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm on the side of the road waving with my flashlight. You're at the wrong house. 30 minutes after the initial motion detected, they eventually make their way to our property and the thieves, they're long gone. But fortunately, nothing was stolen. They just broke one camera and it left us violated. I don't know. We were shaken up. It, shaken, it just we felt shaken. weird. Yeah. Not a good feeling. So we knew the shipping container. We had to say goodbye to it. It was time for it to go. Despite the long night, the build continues on. We were back on site the next day. Hi. To try out some new air sealing details. Of course, we taped the seams as usual, but we also tried out some new air sealing techniques. Okay, so we got Sega Fentrum. It's gonna air seal the gap between the sill plate and the stem wall. And basically it's split release. So you got two sides. So we found it best to just do the top first and then, as you, then come back and do the bottom with applying a pressure to the groove and holding it down. Just like everything else, this worked better as a team. I would keep the tension while Ryan pressed down on the tape. And then Scarlett would follow through with her job. So I'm scrubbing this to make sure it's straight so no buggies get in. This process was a little tedious, but fairly straightforward. We just worked our way around the building and then we were able to try our next air sealing technique, which we invented ourselves. We should name it. What would you call it? The Bell Rise Squish? <laughs> The bell rise squish. <laughs> when we set the trusses, we air sealed the top plate to the inside of the building, but we had nothing that continued that seal to the sheathing on the outside. The bell rise squish is when you take a gasket from Conservation Technologies. If you look at the profile, you've got a little thing here that I'm going to staple, and then this will squish. You staple it to the top plate, and then the sheathing, when you install it, squishes the gasket, creating a seal between the sheathing and the top plate. It was pretty easy to install. We just stapled in place, working our way all the way down the wall, and then we went ahead and put the sheathing on as normal, and it worked really, really well. It just squished it. It felt like a... 
It felt like a tight it felt field. Felt like a tight field. Finally, our first pass around the building was almost complete. High five. We just finished the, the east side of the sheathing here. So, yay, we're very excited. Last thing on the list is to finish the gable ends. While we were up on the lift, we also knew we wanted to finish the roof overhangs. So we brought in some extra help. Today we're going to make a gable overhang. To build these overhangs, we marked out a template board. Scarlett transferred all of the marks onto the other boards. I was on the miter saw where I could cut out equal length blocks to frame out the overhangs and Ryan assembled everything together. This was a fun little project to do as a family. It feels really great to do a family project together because it brings us all together and it feels like they're part of this build and they have some ownership on it. This land is in my family for a while, so making something that we actually create ourselves is important and to have them be a part of that I think is really neat too. In the end, we had these little framed walls that we could screw up onto the roof while we were up there. Working up high was similar to working down low. We cut the boards to length, nailed them in, taped them, and used the router to cut off the excess. For this step, the lift felt mandatory for us. So we decided to go with the lift, which made it a lot easier and we could both be there and it was easier for you know I could actually hold it for him and it made life a lot easier and safer. To attach the overhangs we placed a temporary block to support the bottom. Fasten into place. Once installed measure from the top of that to the peak of the roof. We would make our 45 degree cut and then attach the second leg. Yay, um, today we are doing the last part of the sheathing up there. So we're almost done with the sheathing. That's well. Six Woo! more sheets, six more sheets. We worked our way through the final gable end, first putting up the zip sheathing, then going through later on and taping the seams, and then finishing up with the overhangs. We were excited to be finally done. It might not look like much, but we are proud of how far we have come.